Go ahead and submit the divorce papers. I don't need the kids. He abruptly uttered these words and left the house, leaving behind our three-year-old twins and our newborn daughter. I had a vague suspicion that my husband was cheating on me even before this. But with the demands of parenting and work, I had resigned myself to the situation. I can't stand it anymore. At that moment, my twin daughters clung to me. Their little faces looked up at me with concern, and they said, Mommy, I love you. Despite the overwhelming anger I felt toward my husband, something inside me snapped. Well, fine then. Let's submit them. I declared, signing the divorce papers without hesitation. A wry smile played on my lips. The one who'll be in trouble is him, not me. Little did he know how much I had supported him all these years. And so, unbeknownst to him, he began his descent down the stairs to hell. I'll be late coming home today too. How many times have I heard these words? I am Sally, 34 years old. We got married four years ago, and because my husband is two years younger, I ended up spoiling him initially. The following year, we had twin daughters, and three years later, our third daughter was born. It was around the time of our third daughter's birth that my husband started coming home extremely late. He said, I'd like the third kid to be a boy. I dream of playing catch with him. Interestingly, during pregnancy, he was excited, but his attitude changed drastically when he found out it was a girl. And at the hospital, the husband frowned when he saw the face of the newborn daughter. She doesn't look like me. She's not cute. The moment I heard those words, intense anger welled up within me. How can you say that about your own kid? Why would you even utter such a thing? Perhaps at that moment, I had already started contemplating divorce in the corner of my mind. Even after I was discharged and returned home, his sullen mood persisted. As my maternity leave was ending, my husband hardly helped with childcare. Show some interest in the kids. His response was, If you're short-handed, just hire a babysitter. You have savings. I had a job at a top-tier company and was earning much more money than other women around my age. Meanwhile, my husband frequently changed jobs and struggled to keep one. Perhaps he envied having a wife who was successful at work. At the time, he was doing temporary work, so I worried about how long it would last. Since I couldn't expect financial support, I hoped he would at least fulfill his role as a father at home. But when I asked him to spend time with the kids, he grumbled. It's a hassle. When he reluctantly did help, it was half-hearted, and our daughters seemed bored. My husband sensed that he wasn't well-liked, which bothered him. This negative cycle continued until one day he stopped helping with childcare altogether. I'm tired from work. Let me rest on weekends. He'd either stay holed up in his room or go out with someone else. Today, I had to work even though it is a weekend, and I am in trouble if you take care of our kids. I also have a plan to do, bye. He refused to watch the kids. I couldn't leave the children alone, so I often had to ask for a babysitter on short notice. This situation will ruin our marriage and affect the kids. So, I decided to consult my parents-in-laws. However, their response was disappointing. A wife must endure. That's the key. More importantly, please take care of that thing I was talking about the other day. My parents live far away, so I don't get to see them often. I didn't feel comfortable making phone calls and didn't know who to turn to. Hey, make me some food. When I returned home one evening, 
my husband in his pajamas and a messy room were waiting. The only salvation was that the kids, who had been playing with toys looking bored, brightened up with big smiles as soon as they saw my face. Where were you until this late? I had some business at your parents' house. Hurry up and make dinner. I'm starving. If you've been home all this time, couldn't you have done the laundry or cleaned the bathroom? However, when my husband heard this, he inexplicably smirked. I've decided not to do anything for people who lack manners. What do you mean? I cleaned the bathroom yesterday, and there was no gratitude. Didn't I say thank you? Not that kind of gratitude. I mean an allowance. At least two hundred dollars. He extended his right hand, gesturing for money. What is this man talking about? I wondered. That day, tired and frustrated myself, I called him to the bathroom so the kids wouldn't overhear our conversation. I do everything, work, house chores, and childcare. Haven't you ever thanked me? It's a wife's duty. Then what's your duty? I work too. Despite earning only $1,000 a month and doing nothing around the house, he audaciously made such demands. Our argument continued for about an hour. Mommy, I'm hungry. My daughter's interruption snapped me back to reality. My husband left in a bad mood, but I ignored it and hurriedly prepared dinner. Amidst the tense atmosphere, I discovered his secret. My husband is having an affair. I confided in a colleague we'd been friends with since college. She had also divorced due to her husband's infidelity. You should gather evidence immediately. She shared various methods for collecting proof. Truth be told, I'd suspected my husband's affair of a while. Just before our youngest kid was born, I noticed an unusual, sweet scent coming from him. Were you wearing perfume? I asked him casually when he returned home. He broke into a sweat and stammered. There were other signs too, late returns, reduced conversations, his attitude toward the kids, and the absence of intimacy. But my conviction came from a specific incident. There was lip balm in your jacket pocket. It's mine. My lips get chapped. Are you using Chanel's pink lip balm? Uh, well, that's, um, maybe my mom's. His awkward response sounded like a lie. As he rushed to the bathroom, unbuttoning his shirt, I saw it. What's that? It's unmistakable. In a spot usually hidden by clothing, there was a love bite. I almost confronted him, but I realized I needed evidence first. Take your time to warm up in the bathtub. I smiled and pretended not to see it. The next day, after returning late from work, I found my daughters already asleep. The room was silent except for the dining room light, where my husband stood holding a piece of paper. I've had enough. Let's get a divorce. What? File the divorce papers. I don't want the kids. Before I could respond, he handed me the papers and left. Mommy. The twins woke up from the sound of the door closing, both looking worried. It's okay. Sorry for waking you. I assured them, though things were far from okay. He says he's had enough. That's my line. And he doesn't want the kids? What's that about? Emotions swirled in my mind, and tears flowed naturally, but I didn't notice it. Mommy, I love you. My daughters hugged me tightly, sensing something was wrong. 
At that moment, I regained clarity. This couldn't continue. I couldn't burden my young daughters like this. If I only had my kids, I'd find happiness. I finally realized what I should have done from the start. Well, fine. Let's file the papers. With a determined expression, I said this, and my daughters smiled. That night, we all slept soundly. The next morning, I submitted the divorce papers first and made a call to someone. Yes, please proceed. It's my husband who's going to have trouble. The person on the other end listened to my story and acted. This was something I'd considered for a while. If my husband betrayed me, I'd put an end to everything he'd been doing. Even if it meant his life would fall apart, I had no regrets. Three days later. Sally, where were you? When I returned home from work, my parents-in-law and my husband were waiting. My mother-in-law had an angry expression, my father-in-law looked pale, and my husband seemed clueless about the situation. Did you wait outside the front door the whole time? It's scary, you know. This is no time for that. What's going on? She thrust a letter at me. Notice from a lawyer. It's obvious when you read it. Her face turned as red as a tomato, and her voice grew louder. I have to pick up the girls, so excuse me. Ignoring them, I entered the house. My infuriated parents-in-law followed me into the living room, insisting on discussing the matter. Why did you suddenly send this? We don't know the meaning. You'll understand when you read the letter. Using a lawyer is cowardly. Despite their wrongdoing, they were quick to turn the tables. Frustrated and confused, I pondered how to explain. Finally, my clueless husband spoke up. Is this about being dissatisfied with the divorce and filing a complaint? My parents-in-law stared at him, dumbfounded. Of course, he didn't know what I had done for them all these years. We never heard about a divorce. Is that why this happened? Our son is utterly useless. What's with the urgency? You've ruined everything. Wait a minute. What's going on? As their conversation went nowhere, my mother-in-law slammed the table. Why did you divorce Sally? Uh, well. My husband, caught off guard, struggled to respond. So, I stepped in. Because he completely neglected his duties as a husband and father. You keep saying that. Men are like that, right? Then you'd forgive your father-in-law for cheating? What? Clearly, the revelation of her son's infidelity caught her off guard. My husband attempted to speak, but a stern look from me silenced him. Suddenly, my father-in-law started defending his son. A man's affair is just a game. It's not a problem. It's pointless to argue. Please leave. Any further communication will go through my lawyer. Why talk to a lawyer now? You'll agree to the divorce, won't you? My husband looked bewildered. Not only will I agree, but I've already submitted the divorce papers. What? Then why? As my husband and I argued, my mother-in-law burst into tears. How can you expect me to pay $39,500 all at once? What's with that huge sum? Whom do you pay? Finally, the moment arrived. I confidently revealed my secret. Four years ago, just after we got married, my mother-in-law asked to talk. I need to discuss something. Nervous, I agreed to help, thinking I'd do anything for my new mother-in-law. But her request was shocking. 
Can you lend me $40,000? I was completely confused when she suddenly told me. My mother-in-law, without any hesitation, asked me about my annual income, leaving me bewildered. I couldn't withstand the pressure. Stunned, I blurted out my annual income. Maybe over $65,000. Her eyes sparkled. Apparently, my father-in-law had become addicted to horse racing, squandering money left and right, eventually accumulating debt. I was begged that she desperately needed $40,000 to repay it, and I couldn't refuse. I repeatedly emphasized, you must absolutely pay me back. Then I lent the money. For years passed, and she repaid only $2,600. Sometimes, she'd return the money only to borrow it again. Realizing I'd never recover the full amount, I hired a lawyer and demanded the remaining $39,500. My husband's shocked expression almost made me laugh. I promised to repay it gradually. Why demand it all at once? We're no longer family, so I don't need to be considerate. Then, my mother-in-law made a sound like a monkey. Screech. She erupted in anger, directing it at my husband. You caused this with your affair. Pay up instead of me. Why me? We're retired. Our pension won't cover it. If you want to live in my house, listen to me. Of course, she couldn't pay the $39,500 all at once. After all, my husband was unemployed at the time. I'm going to live at Karen's house, so I won't pay. Is that the name of the woman you're having an affair with? I was getting tired of listening to this mother-son argument. I decided to put an end to it. Don't think it ends with $39,500. I'm going to demand $13,000 each from you and your mistress as compensation. Of course, there's also child support. What? It's only natural. It's the punishment for neglecting your kids and gallivanting around. Where's the proof that I cheated? Have you already forgotten that you loudly declared that you were going to live at your mistress, Karen's house? I sighed and handed him the large amount of evidence photos I had prepared for this moment. I felt like throwing up when I saw them. They were photos my husband posted on social media, showing him kissing and hugging his mistress. Of course, I showed it to my lawyer too, and it was completely damning. Why do you have something like this? I found your social media when I searched online. It's awful that you thought it wouldn't be found. My foolish husband had left his settings open for anyone to see and had been posting carefree photos. He must have continued to use social media without knowing its dangers. It was surprising that my technologically inept husband was doing something like this, but thanks to that, I was able to easily gather evidence of his infidelity. My parents-in-law were also dumbfounded by this, and they stared at him with their mouths agape. All right, please go home now. It's time to go to the daycare center. At least don't demand compensation from Karen. What will I do if she runs away? I don't care about that. Since the situation was not improving, I forcibly kicked out the three of them. Open up. Help me. I didn't know anything about the debt. For a while, I could hear my husband's screams through the door, but I'm going to report you to the police. When I yelled that, they left dejectedly. A year has passed since then, and after paying me compensation, the mistress disappeared. As a result, my ex-husband, who had to live at his parents' house, was persistently told to shoulder the $39,500 and he seems to have borrowed money from a suspicious dealer. I was able to get it back right away, 
but there's also the $13,000 in compensation for the affair and the monthly child support of $330. Now, he seems to be earning his daily wage by doing manual labor from morning till night. The interest on the debt is growing, and he may not be able to repay it even if he spends his whole life. Well, I don't really care about that. Mommy, hurry up or we'll be late. Oops, my daughters are calling me, so I'm off to the daycare center. Everyone is growing up so fast. That alone makes me happy. How did you like this story? Please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.